afternoon. Um, wanted to do a, a short update on something I've been working on. Um, I'd like to put a set of upside down forks on the Himalayan. So a couple months ago I started, you know, doing a little research on what might work, what might easily fit with the least amount of modification. And I came up with um, KLX 300, KLX 250 front end, 2009 probably to present, is a pretty darn close fit. And uh, I'm gonna quickly go over where I'm at right now in the process. So um, let's switch over to the other camera. Okay, here we go. Um, I was able to pick up a set of forks on eBay. I guess relatively cheap. Nothing really wrong with them. They probably need to be rebuilt. Uh, these were for KLX 250, I think 2009 model. And I got them for 170. They're fairly straight. They just needed to be cleaned up. The chrome looks good. Um, on the bottom portions, the feet, there was one broken stud right there. And I've ordered four new studs and four new nuts. Um, and that was really the only damage I could see. So I ordered Racetech heavy duty springs for this, the heaviest springs they have for KLX 300. And I may even have to build some spacers to put some preload on it. Cause the fatty or the Himalayan, sorry, is, um, about a hundred pounds heavier probably than a KLX 300, maybe not quite a hundred pounds, but getting there. Um, so I emailed Racetech and told them the scenario. I was going on a custom build. Um, I was a 200 pound rider and the bike I'm putting him on is probably a hundred pounds heavier than a KLX. And they said, go with the heaviest springs they have. And that's what I did. And they gave me uh, I think air gap measurement for oil. I think it was 90 millimeter. I might have to reduce that though, since uh, I'm gonna shorten these. Uh, plenty of YouTube videos on how to shorten the uh, the throw of upside down fork, so you guys can check that out if you need to. These guys have 11 inches of travel, which obviously I don't need. And it makes them slightly too tall for Himalayan. Uh, I'm gonna shorten them one and a half to one and three quarter inches by putting spacers in the cartridges in the bottom, and that limits how far down they'll travel. Um, like I said, there's videos on YouTube that show how to do that. That'll put them right at where I met right now with my extended forks on the Himalayan. Um, if you can see through there, I have fork extended fork caps from Cooper B, which allowed me to slide the forks down almost an inch. Uh, so that measurement ends up being about where these forks would be um, once they're shortened about one and a half inches, maybe a little more. Um, we'll have to start, you know, when we start fitting up things, we'll have to see how that works out. Um, I have a Himalayan axle, Himalayan nut. I've made a C uh, spacer for the clamp so that the uh, large end of the axle is clamped properly on that four bolt clamp. Um, ends up a Kalex 300 Super Motard has the same size disc as a Himalayan, so I ordered the 300 SM bracket for the brake, and that's a KLX 300 brake. Um, that may have to be shimmed in or out. Don't know until I get all my parts. I'm still waiting for the spacer that goes on this side, and I ordered a speed sensor for this side. Uh, probably didn't need to order a speed sensor. I could have used the one that's on the bike, but I want to try to mock everything up and get it perfect before we actually make the swap. I still have to rebuild the forks. I have uh, I have the springs and the oil and um, the seals and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm gonna run 10 weight oil that was suggested by Racetech with the heavy duty springs and possibly 10 to 15 millimeters of preload. As far as a triple clamp, this is KLX 250S triple clamp and the stem length is almost exactly the same as a Himalayan. Now the bearings are different. The top bearing is exactly the same as a Himalayan, so that was an easy fix. There, there was no fix, just order a new bearing. The bottom 
I had to go through Timken's bearing catalog and figure out the right inner diameter and outer diameter roller bearing for to fit this stem and for this to fit in the Himalayan chassis. And that's, uh, we've got that figured out. The distance from here to here is correct. Um, it's, it's almost like the KLX 250 300 front end was made to go on a Himalayan, kind of scary. Um, where else, what else do we have? Well, we have some rocks risers, We're gonna go up and back with the, uh, probably gonna go with, once I do all this, I'm gonna get some pro taper bars to put on here. Uh, I might even get a forged triple clamp. Still debating that, or CNC, not a forged, sorry, CNC triple clamp because it's a little wider down here and it gives you two bolts. I'm thinking that would be a little heavier duty, but it's from China, so who knows. Um, also ordered all the new plastic guards that go here and here and down below, and there's guides that clip on here. Still waiting on those. Parts are slow to get these days. I'm sure a lot of you know that. Uh, I may have to build a bracket, to uh, like a stay, to keep the uh, speed sensor from turning, but we'll get all this shimmed out and properly um, set up when it comes time. Uh, like I said, the brake might have to be shimmed inward um, to fit the, uh, the Himalayan. I'm going to run the Himalayan wheel and uh, brake. So also I'll have to build a, uh, off of these bolts here, I'll have to build a bracket for the ABS sensor. I have a new ABS sensor ring for the other tire or the other rim, sorry. And let's see what else. I don't know. I think that's about it for the update. Now it's a matter of waiting for parts. I was hoping to be able to do something with it this weekend, but no parts yet. I need that spacer, that speed sensor ring. Uh, what else am I waiting for? I think that might be all to complete the mock-up. Um, so maybe next weekend. And then, of course, I'm still debating in my head to do the uh, CNC triple clamp. Um, and, of course, I'll have to probably do a custom fabrication to get the uh, Himalayan key system to screw into here. And maybe the, uh, the steering lock will work, but I never use a steering lock. Uh, never really even thought about it. I, I, I You know, I take that back. The one couple times I did use a steering lock was uh, we were camping and, and it, the wind started kicking up. So I locked the handlebars over to one direction. Uh, to help steady the bike, but it wasn't an anti-theft thing. It was an anti-tip-over thing. Um, yeah, I don't know what else we can talk about here. Uh, this ought to be an exciting uh, upgrade, and it should be an upgrade because I took the uh, Himalayan out last week on some pretty rough stuff, and I, uh, I bought them the forks out a couple times. It's actually not that difficult to bottom these forks out. I was surprised. Um, I didn't even really ride that aggressive, but as many have said, it's not a dirt bike, it's an adventure bike, but I still feel it should have been a little better. I mean, the rear didn't come anywhere near bottoming out, but I do have the uh, aftermarket shock on the back from the Hagen shock from uh, Hitchcock's. Um, Anyway, uh, I'll do an update when we start uh, mocking this up a little more, getting a little closer, getting the wheel actually bolted on, getting spacers made. I'm going to have to trim the spacer that goes on this side, I'm sure, uh, to center up the disc and actually to get the, the tire in the middle uh, where it belongs. And then from there, we'll slide this back and forth to get the speed sensor. The actual stay for the KLX is down here. Uh, on the Himalayan, I believe it's up top. I don't know that I can turn the Royal Enfield speed sensor this way and make it still work or not. If not, I mean, I got plenty of options for bolting on brackets. Um, like I said, I'll need to bro uh, bolt on a an ABS bracket on this side. Still lots of things to build, but we'll get there and I think it'll be worth it. Uh, once I shorten the suspension, I'll still have Probably nine and a half, nine inches of fork travel. Uh, so that should be plenty. And with the stiffer springs and the 10 weight fork oil, 
Grace Tech seems to feel that that'll work. So we'll just go with what they say. They're the pros, right? And uh, see what happens. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you stuck with it this far, and if you like it, thumbs up. And if you haven't, and it's a possibility, please subscribe. Thank you.